Hello, my name is Einar Jordan, and again, I'm not a doctor or a dietitian, and this is not medical advice. Um, I am a medical, uh, biomedical engineer that works for uh, the pharmaceutical industry, uh, tissue banks, uh, medical devices, etc. Um, mostly in quality engineering, and I had the the job on several tissue banks that I started or run uh, uh, certain departments or then yeah, most departments there uh, to develop using the American Association of Tissue Banks uh, guidance and the FDA for donor assess uh, assessment. Um, I compiled this list to assess donors for fecal matter transplant, uh, looking at uh, using my own experience, doctor's advices, advice um, and uh, some of the guidances that are online and this is not at least uh, a perfect list so it's probably missing things that I but you know it is it's a very long list but it's still there, there might be things that we're, we're missing so <clears throat> the first thing I do is I look at the donor uh, the way the donor was born it was at a vaginal birth versus a c-section birth and this is actually one of the most important things because uh, babies that, that are c-section unless they take a vaginal swab and they they put it in their lip and their and their face they don't absorb the mother's microbiota uh, which is usually uh, the flora of the uh, birth canal uh, and there are several studies that show that there, there are significant differences in health between vaginal born babies versus uh, C-section. And I mean, the, the, the research I don't think is gone as much as uh, the health of the mother, uh, because a lot of diseases are transmittable through the mother and or lack of uh, bacteria. Uh, the, the, the second thing I look is uh, if the child or the person adult already was breastfed at least six months. And this is also very important because a lot of this bacteria is transferred from the mother to the child uh, through the breastfeeding. And again, just like the first one, there are certain conditions that are hereditary and they now seem to be more related to the microbiome of the mother, transferring it to the child. So if you do see that the mother is, uh, has a, a genetic condition, if you're able to assess her, uh, may not a genetic condition, but an autoimmune condition, uh, also listed in here, um, it, it will apply to the child. Uh, there are some rare exceptions, but you know, exceptions are not the rule. Uh, illnesses, histories, they have HIV, hepatitis, A, B, C, D, E, any hepatitis, uh, syphilis, human T-lympho, tropic virus one and two, uh, nematodes, uh, some of those uh, serious illnesses will be a disqualification as well. Uh, antibiotic use, if they have a history of antibiotics, which is very hard because pretty much almost everyone by the age of 18 or 20, I think, already had at least four rounds of antibiotics. That's, uh, that's quite a lot. And so they might already have certain candida species or other species mutated that will enter in your body and cause diseases. I have talked to, spoken to several people that done fecal matter transplant and they just develop immediately uh, fibromyalgia, which is, you know, uh, it, it, within the first or third transplant, uh, they, they don't know what, what happened. Or some have developed Clostridium difficile. So this is, this is very dangerous again. You, you could die. You really need to know your donor. I have the luxury that my donor lives in my house. He's my two-year-old son. I know the mother medical history. So I can reduce my rest level significantly. So again, no history of antibiotics or very, very low history and try to figure out what antibiotics they have taken if possible and see if these antibiotics uh, are, are, are serious issues because uh, some antibiotics are not as serious as others or, or but you know, I, I, I'm not an expert in antibiotics. I took them all <laughs> and a lot of them <laughs> when I was a child, especially tetracycline, that, that I took overdoses of it. No one can explain to me why. I think I was thin, so they wanted me to gain weight and they thought they could kill stuff that stopped me from gaining weight and I'm still thin at 50. Uh, stool type, there is actually a, a, a type 
uh, shard of stools from it's called the Bristol B R I S T O L stool types, and types one and two are in no, types five and seven are in no, types three and four are the best suitable uh, stools for transplant. Uh, so it has to do with consistency. So it should be solid. And, and, and frequency, uh, bowel movement frequency is also very important. You should not take a transplant for somebody that goes to the bathroom more than three times a day. I'll say on the average once a day, uh, it should be. Um, but I, like I said, on the average, some people go two times and three times one day, and the next day they don't go at all till the day after. But if they have three times or more, and I actually had a doctor call me and we, we went through, um, through how he selected his donor. And uh, one of the, the things that he missed is that this, this, uh, this donor was having about seven bowels a day and the mother was diabetic. Uh, and the, the donor was young. Uh, was on the, was a minor, but you know it, it looks like she had acquired whatever condition the mother had. That's that's just part of the microbiome. The seventy percent of your autoimmune system is the microbiome. Almost who you are. I mean, I I, I noticed when I did my transplant that my uh, my focus and my uh, certain I'll say traumas that I had from taking clonazepam just disappeared, dissolved. I I didn't realize it. Uh, bloating or gas, if they have frequently, it, it should be rare to never. Diarrhea, also rare to never. Constipation, also rare to never. Uh, upper gastrointestinal issues, acid reflux, heartburn, ulcers, SIBO, SIFO, um, all those conditions are autoimmune diseases, diabetes also. Um, Donor age it should not be older than 50 and shouldn't be younger than two. It should be eating solid foods. Uh, that's why children younger than two are not uh, suitable. Um, and uh, usually are drinking milk before two, a lot of milk. So hair loss. This is a sign of an autoimmune disease. Uh, my hair in carnivore diet uh, grew by 25%. At the very least, 25 to 50 percent, I was losing a lot of hair, and and, and you know it, it, the the reason why I did it is because I I, I suppress with, without sugar and carbohydrate I suppress a lot of bacteria and yeast. So after I did the, it's still too early to tell if the fecal matter transplant added more hair. It's only been about two months since I've done it. Uh, we'll probably have to wait about six months to really see results. And I'm I'm actually doing a treatment with antifungals to see if I can kill the remnant yeast that's still there and I will redo the FMT after. Um, eyesight. So before many of these procedures that stabilize my uh, microbiome, my eyesight was de decreasing by about, uh, I, I had to, sorry, I was changing glasses pretty much every year, every two years and now improved by 50%. Even my, my eye doctor was impressed. He was like, well, how, what did you do? I'm like, well, I stopped eating carbs. <laughs> uh, BMI. Uh, BMI is also important. You want a person between 18 and 24 BMI. If they are below 18, they're too thin. That's not always a good sign. Not everybody gains weight when they have an autoimmune disease. Some of us just can't gain weight or hold weight and lose it easily. So. Muscle mass, a person cannot gain muscle, doesn't have to be a huge bodybuilder, uh, but if they can gain lean muscle mass, that's also a sign. There are certain studies, there is a bunch of studies, or at least one that I read, that they, they have linked muscle mass to bacteria in the intestine. Uh, it's not 100% of your muscle mass results, but it does influence significant levels. Same with hair, there is research. They can't pinpoint which one is the bacteria but they know that it's, it's the bacteria. Uh, signs of inflammation, neck, arms, darkness around the eyes, um, foggy eyes, uh, lumps, uh, lymph uh, nodes, inflammation, uh, mus musculoskeletal joint issues like arthritis, joint issues, tears, inflammation, bone spurs, all of those things are autoimmune uh, disease, uh, diseases. Um, energy level, if they're tired, if they require more than six to eight hours of sleep, 
because uh, you will inherit their sleeping pattern in most cases, it seems. Um, if they have any mental health problems, this has also been linked to the microbiome uh, through either diet trials or transplants of uh, fecal matter. They have shown that it's far more effective than any medication that's out there. So any signs of depression, anxiety, psychiatric disorders, neurological disorders, uh, all of that, you will get it if you do this. You have to be, this is, I can't stress this enough. This is very tough to do. Uh, very scary, very dangerous. Uh, headaches, headaches also are a sign. Uh, if they have any type of therapy, radiation therapy like proton, immunosuppressants, chemotherapy, all of that will destroy the, the microbiome. Sexual behavior, if they are a person that's uh, have a lot of sexual partners, are also the risk increases. Um, and most of, the, most of the questionnaires that I have to develop will ask you very detailed information about your sex life uh, and uh, the frequency and the type of people you have sex with, which is uh, it's very, that's what they use for tissue transplant, cadaveric tissue transplant. Traveling records, you know, where have you been? Has, was there an outbreak? Was there an exposure to anything around the time that you travel that, that could potentially be still there on, on undetected? Blood contact. So anybody that's got a recent tattoo, less than two years old, um, works with blood or have some type of transfusion, needle sticks, blood contract, contact, first-line workers, uh, medical tourists, illegal drugs use, all of that will disqualify donors. Uh, or I, I disqualify it entirely. Cancer, cancer could be transmitted. It, uh, there are also tests that, uh, test no, um, uh, clinical evidence that if you do a, a, a micro, uh, a fecal matter transplant, uh, a lot of people go on remission from their cancer um, and you know, for whatever reason, they we still don't know why it was the specific bacteria that suppresses whatever is making us sick. Um, and any other type of treatment like growth hormone, insulin, anticoagulant uh, medication, transplant, uh, systemic infections, uh, I mean, things like eczema, vitiligo, uh, all of those skin disorders, they tend to uh, disappear in a, in a zero carbohydrate diet. Same with cancer, they tend to like improve significantly or and or disappear in a zero carbohydrate diet and or a fecal matter transplant, which seems uh, uh, like a good indicator that it is an autoimmune disease and a, a serious dysbiosis of of your gut flora. So uh, again. Uh, if you, if anyone wants to reach out and, and ask me any specific questions on diseases, I'm not a doctor, but I can probably uh, point out at, at the reason why. There is always studies that, that, that are available on Google. Anybody can research the disease. But even things like uh, Alzheimer's, they have shown, uh, or or Parkinson, they, they have shown to respond very well to fecal matter transplant in many cases, which is rather interesting. Um, Please join my channel. I'll continue to try to create more um, uh, videos uh, helping people out with their conditions, and and uh, hopefully we can all get out of this one because it's uh, it's it's uh, it's very difficult to live with all of these conditions, and the medical community really can do very little other than than make it worse or stabilize us in most cases. Um, have a great day. Please join. I'll continue the work.